Hey, Joe Martin here. You've seen our commercials over the years, and you may be wondering, what's in it for me? Well, ITI Technical College has been selected by Forbes magazine as a top 32-year college. But even more than that, the reason we do this is you. Our tagline is, for a better life. And we mean that for you to be able to have the life you've always dreamed about, to do the things for your family you've always dreamed about. And it can begin here where we are dedicated to your success because here at ITI. This is Sports 225 with Lee Feinswag. And I'm Lee Feinswag. We're in our 24th year. If you count Sports Monday and Sports 225, and the only way that could happen is, well, it's my show. Boy, that's bad. Sports 225 is brought to you by Breck. And now, me. We're actually going to be playing. We're on the back back. That's it. Oh, it's a special Sports 225 because Pete Boudreaux is here. We've known each other a long time, and um, it would have been proper for him to come on the show at any time and tell stories. But this year... He is not retiring from Catholic High, despite the fact that in October, I believe you will turn 78 years old. You are correct, man. You got the date straight. That's right. Can't but... deny that. The calendar <laughs> keeps telling me that. <laughs> but Pete is going to retire as the track and field coach at Catholic High after a mere 51 seasons. How does anybody stay in any job for that long? And especially because it's like a total of now, what, 53 at the school? Correct. Yeah. Yes, at Catholic High. How, how do you maintain that consistency? It, it's, uh, golly, Lee, I can't even answer it because I, I, it never was a plan of mine or anything. You know, uh, I, I joke about it and some of the other people heard it so many times, but man, I was married, had two kids. I needed a job and Catholic High offered me a job and <laughs> they, they told me I could coach football and basketball and track and be the head of the P department and teach a couple of history courses and they were going to pay me more than five thousand dollars a year I thought I'd died and gone to heaven man calling the wife you know check out some of this property in Florida or something we hit the mother load uh, and then when they threw in if I worked two extra weeks in August I could make two hundred more dollars well that's where it started but it was a job and, and uh, to be able to go back to the old school you know where you graduate obviously that's special and uh, then I just kept signing these one-year contracts because we never get a long, you never get a long-term contract. No, every you don't spring get a signing have, bonus. Right. You don't get any of that. Every spring they ask you, are you coming back? That's right. That's it. And, uh, you know, and all of a sudden you've signed 30 of them and 40 of them and gosh, now I've done 51 of them or whatever it is now. And uh, it just wasn't a plan. It just, it, I had offers other places and, I always, you always look, and uh, man, I just love Catholic High too much. It had, it had to be awfully good. Uh, I'm not talking financial wise. Right, sure. It just had to really be something special because Catholic High, yeah, I could dedicate so much of my time to it, but I was still able to watch my children grow up, still able to watch my grandchildren grow up. Three, and, and three kids, six grandchildren. Three kids, six grandchildren, and uh, you know, get to see them and all of their activities. Uh, a lot of hours, but man, I, I just, uh, hey, when your hobby is your passion, uh, that's a pretty good deal. Oh, uh, absolutely. And, and that's, that's how I feel. To wit, look at this. <laughs> I mean, come on, really. I'm on television. Uh, you know, I was pretty impressed. My, my 1991 Isuzu Trooper passed inspection this week for the uh, 28th year in a row. Oh, and I was gosh. thinking that was monumental. That's nothing. Um, <laughs> did LSU ever offer you a job as a track, either, you know, as a track coach in some capacity? With with the different head coaches, they, they asked me to visit with them and, and talk about possibilities, mm -hmm. and, and I always entertained them. I really did. And uh, well, Joe Dean, yeah. you know Joe 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 called me to, when he wanted help finding a track coach uh, right before they hired Pat Henry, and uh, I enjoyed that. And then later on, he said, "Man, we can't get the guy away from Catholic guy." You know how he was, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I never wanted to be the head track coach at LSU or anything. Yes, I did consider some of the, you know, another position, but I don't know. I just, uh, well, I like that, the group of, the age group people I work with. When I moved here and covered some LSU track meets and some big meets, NCAA championships and just huge events at uh, LSU, um, the first thing 
that impressed me was going into the press box and this couple down the end working the finish line and doing all the dirty work. And I'm pretty sure it was a volunteer, you and Pat, doing yes, that. Yes, sir, Ray. And uh, we still do it. You know, obviously when there's a high school meet going on, and I can't work, but she always does. Uh, yeah, and I've done that for 50 plus years. Pat's done it 40 years or so. Uh, and you know, so it's a way that I can still work with my alma mater, LSU, in, in whatever capacity I can help. And when they had uh, the last NCAA champs and they hosted here, uh, Pat asked me to be the meet director. And I mean, it was just an honor for me. Heck of a lot of work, but it's just, wow, that they, they would still want me around to do this, you know? So been able to be a part of the LSU athletic program along with my own profession is as that's been an added bonus to be quite honest um so you were born in baton rouge uh correct me if i have this right like a couple of months before the japanese and bombed pearl harbor that's that, correct. that sticks, sticks in my mind from talking 1941 to you once you're right there you go and it's safe to say the baton rouge was a slightly different place in oh, the 40s. God. Oh, my God. If, if you were like, in, in, if somebody said to you, what's the single biggest difference besides all the growth? I mean, that's just obvious because every place just grows. Anything that uh, would strike you? Well, it, it was a, a town, you know, one thing, I, I mean, we all tell these stories. I never had a key to my house because the doors were never locked. And I'm talking about ever. Uh, if we ever went out of town, which was very seldom because there were 11 of us living there, uh, uh, he's one, not, of, he's one, one of nine one, kids, one by of the nine. way. One of nine, so we had a gang there, but even if we went somewhere, you didn't lock the house. And somebody might come home and find out one of your brother's buddies, he's sleeping on the sofa somewhere. <laughs> he just had to go sleep somewhere. What, what, what kind of car it, did you have great. that would fit 11 people? Or did you? We only had one car, and uh, Daddy, Daddy took the car to work, so... Man, we weren't at home. We bicycles get, took you a lot of places. Walking took you a lot of places. Uh, riding the bus. I mean, that, that was uh, sometimes the only way to get downtown to downtown Third Street in Baton Rouge. But they, they were they were they were great days, wonderful days. You know, out in most of the neighborhood, the families all had two, three, four kids. We had nine kids and. Yeah. Man, right, we, we just had things to, you know, we could always find something to do. Oh, I'll bet you could. And they weren't bad, just things to do. Oh, I'll bet you got in trouble sometimes. Um, <laughs> well, I still haven't told those stories. That's <laughs> good. Um, we got to take a break. We're way over on this first segment. Pete Boudreaux is the Catholic High, now just the cross country coach. He's also a guidance counselor there. We'll visit more with him when we get back to Sports TV. Back out of the chaos. We're back on Sports 225, hanging out with Pete Boudreaux, who has been at Catholic High for over 50 years. He's going to return for the 2019-20 school year as still a guidance counselor and the cross-country coach, but he's given up as the track and field coach after all these years. He won a few state championships in there, had a couple of good athletes during that run, huh? Oh, golly. It's been, it's been a ride, Lee. You, you know, you... you you really start looking back on it because the funny thing about coaching is uh, you get so tied in and, and, and focused on the season you're trying to put together. Now you're always thinking ahead, but as soon as you accomplish something, come up a little short or have great success or whatever, then you got to put it behind. You get ready for the next time. Well, this year has kind of given me the opportunity just to look back mm -hmm. and say, wow. Got a couple of favorite moments? I mean, I'm sure you've been asking. I'm sure you got a couple of favorite moments and a couple of favorite athletes that. Well, you know, there have been so many, you know, you'd hate to single out one or two and leave something out, but I mean, some of them are, uh, yeah, they. Remember the first state championship? Oh, good gosh. Okay, yeah. tell us about 1972, that. 1972, uh, ran at uh, state cross country meet, ran out of the, the LSU golf course, and uh, 
we were the new kids on the block, you know. Uh, there were some other guys that had Brother Martin, for instance, down in New Orleans had kind of been established, and we were we was trying to get our foot in the door. And uh, oh man, it, it was it was a heck of a day, and uh, you know the sport isn't at the level it is now. It was still good, but not many teams had five and six and ten and twelve, fifteen guys that were really good. You usually, just had three or four, and you. Where were you going to get a fifth one, you know? Mm -hmm. Might be the guy that's in the band well, or the swimmer or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. But that's just, see, the thing, if, if you're ever in the neighborhood of where Catholic High is, especially in the fall, when it's hot as hell, and the odds are your traffic is going to be interrupted by an army of kids wearing shorts and sneakers, training, long distance running for you in that weather, how do, how do you get all those kids out there to do it? Oh, man, that... Uh, you know, we, well, there's always that, that, that uh, you've heard that statement made, you know, there's a fine line between commitment and should be committed. And <laughs> that's the line those guys walk. Because, you know, to do it, man, you got to pay your dues. And if you don't, you, you, just, you just can't have any success in it. What it, was the first uh, indoor, indoor state championship? That was in... Or, I'm the, sorry, not indoor, uh, track and field state championship. Uh, 1980. Uh-huh. And that that was a that was very uh, memorable because it, it was uh, it was one of those situations which can happen in almost any sport. We we weren't we weren't a favorite or anything, but the meet gets started. And all of a sudden, some of the top guys are supposed to do well. False start. And then somebody dropped the relay baton. And somebody else got a guy hurt. And all of a sudden, nobody was scoring very many points. And we just packing away and. Well, we get two events left. And, man, we got a chance. <laughs> we got a chance. We just kind of, we just kind of. I won't say we went in the back door. We just kind of snuck up on everybody because we were never. When they would announce team scores, we were never even mentioned. And then all of a sudden, we got to the last two events, and we were pretty good in those. And son of a gun, next thing you know, we up on the podium. That's cool. So that was good. And then from there, you move the next year when you had all of that team returning and people said, boy, they could be pretty good. So then I started feeling the other side of it. A little bit of pressure now. Hunted. You're supposed to do well. Right. Well, let me ask you this. So without, you know, it, coaches always hate when you say, all right, who's your favorite athlete or, you know, that kind of stuff. And I don't want to put you in that position. But there must have been a performance or two, either on the cross country or the track and field side, that just simply blew you away. Maybe somebody broke a state record in a 100-meter dash or somebody threw something farther or a relay with a great comeback. Is there anything like that that sticks out for you? Well, probably, probably one of them that, that sticks out uh, the most is in the 91 state meet. We went into the final event, the 4 by 4 and the situation was we had to win the race. Another school, Franklin, I believe it was, they had to finish fifth in the race. If that happened, we'd be one point off. If they finished fourth, they would be one point ahead of us. And we were not the top seed. And uh, we just, we ran an incredible race. And it was the weirdest thing as you're sitting here, you're watching your kids, and you're screaming and you're hollering, and you're looking back, where's the other team? Where's Franklin? Where? Did, do you remember the, the four kids who ran on that relay by chance? Oh, heck yes. All right, come on. Robert Funderburg, where Fundy led it, led it off, went to Ron Lewis, who's coaching up at Central now. We went to Stuart Eames, who was one of our deceased members of the team, and uh, Robert Nobles. And boy, they, uh, excuse me, Kurt Dietrich uh, anchored that relay, my, my bad. Uh, Kurt, was, Kurt was incredible. He, uh, he was just this little guy. He just didn't look like he fit out there, but he was state champion at 400 meters, and then uh, it came through like you wouldn't believe. But man, we went from, from Dietrich and he handed off, then the next guy goes, and then we got a lead on the last lap. But again, like I said, we're, we're looking at, wow, we're leading, but they're- So as soon as you win, you turn they, your attention, and, yeah. And yeah. and I'm not making it, uh, Brother Martin, I can remember it so well, Brother Martin passed Franklin and may have beat him by that much for the <laughs> fifth position. <laughs> well, we going nuts, everybody's cheering, screaming, hollering, he goes, man, it, First time we ever really pulled off something like this, so close, so, man, down to the wire. And Don Hood, one of my assistant coaches, he's hyperventilating, man. We haven't, we haven't <laughs> put a bag on him because he has gone down on his knees about to pass out. It was, it was just so intense. 
but it's so memorable. And boy, when, when you see Ron and Fundy and, and Kurt and all those guys today, like, man, do y'all remember that? And I said, do y'all remember Coach Hood? Well, they didn't remember that because they were down on the track. <laughs> but Don still, he still, we both just laugh about it. Oh, he's was, such a character. Oh, man, he's so great. Uh, great stories from Pete Boudreaux. Um, we're going to continue with him after we take this break. I'm Lee Feinstock at Sports 225. Yeah, I could, you know, after almost 40 years. You know, well, uh, what, what we're, we? we're back on Sports 225, and a quick correction to the uh, order of the last relay that we were talking about. <laughs> that would have been Robert Funderburg, who you did say, then Ron Lewis, then Jason Atuso, and then Kurt Dietrich. Got it. But uh, To win the state championship. To win the state title, and yeah. they, they all did their part of it. Which was... Uh, Quick math, 38 years ago or so? Well, right. Yeah, that, that 81, was 82? 91. Oh, 91. And, and 91. really what I did, senior moment, I started thinking of an 81 group that set a state record, and some of those guys got switched in there. But I don't know how you the, can. The order I gave is correct. Well, do you have, when you're out and about, because you've been there for so long and you'll be somewhere like, say, grocery shopping or at a restaurant or you're out, and, and a guy comes up to you and you know you know him, but you can't remember what year, what his name was, and you hope that you know he reintroduces himself and say, yeah, yeah, that must be true, because you have to have that. Oh, that'll happen. Now, you know, to be honest, I, I do, do have a pretty good memory with names and faces, but oftentimes that will happen. And, can, uh, at Catholic High, where you've got, um, you're over, you've got four, five grades of over 200 kids each, right? We've got about 1,100 students. Yeah, so, so that's well over I mean, you know, 50-something years at 200 graduates a year. Yeah, well, they have to remember his coach. I, <laughs> I got to remember a little more than, hey, how are you doing? Uh, no, so sometimes I will. Like, give me the yeah. name, man. Give, yeah. me, give me some help. That's good. Yeah. No, that's great. Um, so as a guidance counselor, what's been the biggest developments and changes to being a guidance counselor um, at a place like Catholic? Because I imagine it's multifaceted, not the least of which is, you know, helping kids, you know, through their high school experience, but a lot of what you do is getting them ready to go to colleges as well, right, and making sure they're on the well, right path. Well, it, it, has, it has changed to that where there is so much emphasis on preparing them for college, preparing them for the ACTs, getting them into the ACT prep, providing them with prep courses. Uh, but fortunately, at Catholic High, one of the main thrusts has always been personal counseling because... Uh, we just feel like it's so important. And, and uh, there's still those guys that sometimes come through and you say, boy, you know, kid's been here three years. Have we really made any contact with him? You know, he just kind of doesn't fit. And hopefully, you know, sometimes a teacher can pick up on that because they're, they're our first resource. Mm -hmm. Or a counselor can pick up that, man, something's just not right with yeah, Pete. Yeah. You know, why don't you sit down with him a few minutes? Uh, so we try to continue to do that, and, and it, boy, it's a, a just constant battle. All right, we got to prepare them for all this college stuff, but wait, we got to help them grow up a little bit too, because uh, we learn more and more about college admissions, and their parents learn more and more. But at the same time, they're still 15, 16, 17 years old. They, they're dealing with all kinds of stuff. So sometimes just a person that they can talk to is good, mm -hmm. and and we. We never want to quit making ourselves available to them in that capacity while also dealing with the other. Modern day statement, you hear this a lot. You hear people say, kids have changed. Today's kids are different than before. And I believe there's something to that, but not totally. I think the biggest thing is parents have changed and society's changed. But as a guy who not only coaches the athletes, but deals with them, let me just throw any of those out there. You can either softball them <laughs> or just go, ah, I plead the fifth. No, you, you, no, no. What you say is exactly true. It it's changed, but it hasn't changed. And and you know, I'll go back to what I said earlier. They're still 16 years kids old. Kids still want to excel, don't they? 
That's both right. academically they and They still want to do well, and, and sometimes uh, almost to their own detriment. You know, you, you, they're trying to take four and five honors courses. They're trying to be in three clubs, and they're trying to be in one or two athletics and, uh, events, and it's like, man, when do you sleep? When, when do you ever just have some downtime? Mm -hmm. They amaze me in that respect, what some of those guys are capable of doing. Uh, then on the other hand, yeah, the, uh, the parents have changed, and it's, I, I guess maybe because when I look at parents now, they wait, I used to teach you, so don't tell me what's wrong with your boy. He probably acts just like you did. That's, that's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> you, you reap what you sow. Do you, you know? have any uh, grandchildren you're teaching of, of kids uh, you taught? Believe it or not, I, uh, Joe LeBlanc, who was on my first football team there, and then we coached and taught together. Uh, I coached his sons that when they were there. He's got a grandson there now. That's that, uh, now, I haven't taught him or coached him, but I know who he is. So that's, that's a third-generation guy. And I, I see more, more coming soon. That's amazing. It is. And of course, really the place is. does have tradition where you know, kids continue to, you know, to go there as, as part of the family, so that's to be expected. But, well, you know, yeah. even uh, at, at, when I was a student there, I can remember, you know, sometimes brothers, they'd start calling the role, oh, you so-and-so's son, or you so-and-so. Man, what's with this guy? Did, he, did your uncle go to school? Yes, yeah, sir. And now I'm doing the same thing. But, it, but it's like, did your grandfather go to school here? I may have gone to school with him. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's yeah, stop, just great. Stop there. i got to go to break. I, can't even, I just can't even fathom. He's Pete Boudreaux. we got time for one last segment here on Sports 55. We'll be right back. Back out of the chaos. Coming down the home stretch of another Sports 225. Uh, go to sports225.com for all the show listings of when we're on CST and on Your View, which is Cox 4, and to see all the archived shows, including if you missed the one last week with Stanley Jacobs, it was fantastic. And I was talking to him on the ride over because I haven't put that up on the Sports 225 YouTube channel yet, but I will. Um, you can go see any of the old shows, including this one, uh, eventually. Uh, thanks to John Williams from Think JCW for directing. Pete Boudreaux is here, has had an unbelievable career at Catholic High. He turned 78 in October when he will be still back at the school as the guidance counselor and the cross-country coach. So people must ask you this all the time. It's not an original question. When or are you going to retire, retire? <laughs> I hope never personally, but you know. Well, as I, I guess it will be one or two things when, it, when I'm driving to school one morning, I say, boy, I don't feel like doing this. I'll know, yeah, I've got the answer. Or if I pull up to school one day and they've changed the locks, uh, that, that, <laughs> they've given me the message. But I, it's just, you know, I'm still having fun. I love what I'm doing. And it is, that's true, though. I mean, I, I know you, and I know and, and the conversations we've had, and I've seen other interviews that you've done. You're obviously sincerely just enjoying yourself, and as well you should. No, I, I, yeah. th you know, I, I, I thank God every day. I mean, because I, I, I tell people, I love going to work. I love what I'm doing. I love the people I'm working with. And being with young people keeps you young. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. And I love going home at night because I love being with my wife and I love being with the family. So, you know, there's nowhere in, in my life that I go that, man, I dread this. You know, I love going to Mass on Sunday morning. I love going to Mass with, with, with Pat. I love going home. I love being at school. I love going to watch guys play a soccer game or something, man, because I'm always making that statement. Man, I just love my guys. That's I great. I love my guys. Well, I got to tell you, too, you know, he's in not – not one, not two, not three, not four, but five halls of fame. The last one you went into three years ago was the uh, National High School Athletic Hall of Fame, right? But you're in the LHSAA, the Catholic High, regular Catholic High, oh, the yeah. Grizzly Greats, and then I, and then the LHSA. One, I may, have, I, I don't know. Oh, the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame. Sports hall and of that, fame. I'm telling you, 
I think that being in the Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame might be a tougher thing to get into than the National High School Hall of Fame. That, that, I mean, that's some pretty elite company. That one totally blew me away. I'll be quite honest. I, I, I was a specialist when they, when they notified me. They said, you got to be kidding. You sure you got the right number? You sure you got the right guy? No, that, that was just... Uh, I mean, that's people you grew that's up it. idolizing, uh, you know. No, Wait, no I'm, I'm going to be somewhere well, where they are. Yeah, but you know what? A lot of people grew up idolizing you, and so this is dibs now. For the next time you come on is when, when and if you do decide to retire. <laughs> okay, I hope it's not too soon, Wiss, but go. who knows? And they may change might... the locks, man. Yeah, nah. <laughs> All right, Pete, thanks so much. It was you, great talking to you. Oh, great, Lee. Thank you, man. What All an right. enjoyable time. Uh, thank you. All right, uh, thanks for watching Sports 225. we got to get out of here. Good night. At Carnival Time by Baton Rouge Bay, that's the site of my story. At Spanish Town Mardi Gras, things can get blurry. See the moors marching.